in the mid 1970s there was a couple of companies that decided to try their hand at electronic games. The earliest form of this was a video game called Pong. It was very simple, it was rectangles and squares, and it was essentially ping pong. You would move the paddles up and down and knock the ball from paddle to paddle, and if you missed the ball, your opponent scored a point. It was very simple. There wasn't a lot of development beyond that for games for a long time. One, there wasn't enough interest in it to put lots of money into it. But then in 1977, something phenomenal happened, and that was the film Star Wars. Star Wars put a bug in everybody's ear and pinching their behind to get out and create some sort of epic science fiction. So, a couple of companies started to produce science fiction themed video games, and the most successful one that hit arcades and bars and restaurants all across the United States and Japan and Canada was Space Invaders. And it was this epic game where you moved your little tank behind three protective barriers that the aliens as they descended from the skies would try and destroy and destroy you. A couple of years went by and we uh, were gifted, the world was gifted with Pac-Man, which became one of the biggest money-making arcade games of all time. It was unheard of revenue, a quarter at a time, people playing Pac-Man brought in enough money to rival major motion pictures in the theaters. It was astounding. But with that event, the world was forever changed, and we were going forward with video games and arcades. There was development in the home market as well, console games that you played at home, but it took a while for them to catch up to the quality of what was available in the arcades. You can still find arcades today, and they're wonderful, and you should, but there are a lot of people who prefer to play at home. That's fine as well. But it all started quite simply and humbly with a little game called Pong.